everyone, and welcome to At Home with the Bay. My name is Cindy Willems, and I'm the Director of Education for the Galveston Bay Foundation. We are so excited to bring you this series of virtual field trips. Each video will include virtual labs and field trip activities, a conservation craft, talks with bay biologists, and an outside activity that you can safely participate with. Today's topic is the microscopic ecosystem. How low can you go? Hi, my name is Mariah. And I'm Brooke. And in today's lab, we're going to be investigating the ecosystem in our backyard using these mini microscopes. These are great at showing us objects up close and allowing us to see the fine details of things around us. They are a very inexpensive tool that you can find online. These mini microscopes can be easily connected to your phone using the Wi-Fi box that it comes with. With that being said, are you ready to go collect things to look at with our mini microscopes? Yeah, let's go explore. All right, so we found various types of leaves and flowers. And we found a caterpillar on one of them. And for the rest of the stuff, we have berries and snails. So now we're gonna take a closer look with the mini microscopes, you ready? Yeah. Did you know a lot of parts make up a flower? The part that people are most drawn to are the petals because of the pretty colors they have. But let's try to identify some other important parts. Here is the sepal, also known as a bud. This is the first part of the flower to form. Its job is to protect the developing flower. You can see on this sepal that the flower has not bloomed yet. This part is the stamen, which is the male part of the flower. It's made up of two pieces, the anther and filament. Anthers are what produces pollen in flowers. On this flower, you can see all of this yellow powdery stuff. That's the pollen. And the filament is what holds up the anther. Those are all those thin pink structures you see. Flowers also have what's called a pistil, which makes up the female part of the flower. It has three pieces, the stigma, style, and ovary. This is the stigma. It's the part that's above all of the anthers and filaments. The style and ovary are way down inside the stigma. Kind of hard to see here. Insects inside the flower, such as thrips, as you can see here, brush up against the pistil. This helps to transfer pollen and fertilize seeds. We also found snails in the backyard. All land snails are gastropod mollusks, which means they belong to the same group as octopuses. They are also invertebrates, which means they are animals that don't have a backbone. Let's take a closer look. The shell of the snail has whorls, which is the spiral shapes you see. They continue to build more whorls to their shell as they grow bigger. Did you know snails have a foot? This is how they move, by using the muscles that they have in the foot. Snails eat vegetation, like thick-leafed plants. They even eat flowers and fruits. Let's take a look at the leaves we found. A petiole is what connects the blade of the leaf to the stem. This long line going up the leaf is called the midrib. This helps to keep the leaf strong and protect it from the wind. And all of these other lines that are branching away from the midrib are veins. They help to transfer water and minerals throughout the leaf. All right, Brooke, what did you think about that? It was fun. Yeah? Well, which one was your favorite thing to look at? The flowers. You can see some of the bugs inside and it's like, Nasty because you can see them up close. <laughs> so now we're going to learn more about the microscopic ecosystem with our bay biologists coming up next. There are many microscopic ecosystems all around the Galveston Bay. They are very important because they help support the balance of the bay and all the organisms who live there. These ecosystems are made up of microorganisms, which are microscopic living beings or any life form too small for the naked human eye to see. Microscopes are needed to see these little guys. And some microorganisms you've heard of are bacteria, fungi, algae, and plankton. Microorganisms are crucial to nutrient recycling in ecosystems as they act as decomposers. 
Decomposers break down once living organic material into energy and nutrients. Without these decomposers, our world would be full of poop, dead skin, and the bodies of anything that's ever lived. Something has to eat all the stuff no one else wants to eat in order to keep our world in balance. The nutrients that these microorganisms free up go right back into the ecosystem to be used by other plants and animals. In Galveston Bay, many of these microscopic organisms live in oyster reefs, marsh grasses, seagrass beds, or underground in the sand or mud. Each habitat has its own unique variety of microorganisms. Microplastics and microfilaments, also known as nurdles, can cause problems in these ecosystems by becoming accidentally ingested by the animals thinking it's food or becoming entangled or entrapped by them. This can kill or seriously harm animals living in these ecosystems. Luckily, there's something each of us can do about it. By reducing the amount of plastic we all use, we can reduce the amount of nurdles and other plastics that enter the water. You'll hear more about the ways you can do this coming up next. Hi, I'm Sasha, and today's conservation craft is taking an old t-shirt and turning it into a reusable bag. So for this craft, you're gonna need an old t-shirt you don't mind cutting up, some scissors, a marker, something round like a plate or a lid, and then if you do have one, a ruler, but this is not required. So in order to start, make sure you have a parent or adult around to help you with the cutting, is you're gonna wanna lay out your t-shirt so that the collar is facing you. And what we're gonna start off with first is cutting the sleeves off so we can create handles. So to cut the sleeves off, you wanna make sure that you keep this seam here intact because that's gonna keep our handles on our new bag strong. So cut outside the seam. Doesn't have to be perfect. Make sure they're lined up here. Here we go. Cut outside the seam. There we go, put that aside. Straighten out the other side. Great. And cut this off as well. And then next, we're gonna outline this top area here so it's nice and even to create our handles. That's what I like to use a plate or a lid for. So we're just gonna place it around the collar. And I like to do this while the shirt is right side out so you can decide if you wanna keep your logo there or any fun design that you have. And then we're gonna take our marker and we're gonna just draw a little outline here so we know where to cut. And then move your plate aside and then you're gonna cut right along this now it's not quite even but that's okay and then you want to cut on the outside of the marker so you don't see it anymore on your handles Perfect. okay so now we have our handles which is pretty awesome now what we're gonna do is turn it inside out so that we can attach the bottom. So we want to make sure to attach both ends of the bottom here together. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and imagine how long we want our bag to be. Probably about that long, right? So what we're going to do is cut about half of that off. So this is where your ruler might come in handy. Probably about four inches or so is good or three inches or so. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You could even leave the whole thing if you wanted. Great. So now what we're gonna do is create our little ties to seal up the end of the back. So cut the end along the side here and make sure it's long enough that you'll be able to tie a little knot. Okay, now you're gonna wanna go all the way along the bottom and just cut little strips here. 
so that you have enough to tie off into a knot. So again, about two inches or so is perfect. Now, because the shirt is inside out, you're not gonna be able to see this. If you wanted to get fancy, you could leave the shirt right side out and then your bag will have a little fringe on the bottom. Ever you like. So now what we're gonna do is tie all of these into a little knot. So you wanna take the ends, cross them once, and cross them again to make a knot. That'll make sure your bag is nice and sturdy. And then go all the way down the line, tying your own knots, and that will seal your bag right up. So that's what it would look like on the outside of your bag if you did it right side out. But since we did ours inside out, we're gonna flip it right side out, straighten it out a little bit here. And I have a brand new reusable tote. And it matches my biker on the bay shirt. Thanks for watching, guys. And go make your own reusable bag at home with whatever t-shirt you like. Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm going to share some tips on how you can reduce microplastics in your own home. First, you can start by using reusable bags to eliminate all those plastic bags that we get at the grocery store. I don't know about you, but I always forget my bags at home. So I found this foldable reusable bag. Super easy to unfold into a big bag. And then when you're done with it, fold quickly back up into its little pouch. Perfect for your purse, your pocket, or even your car. Also, you can use reusable produce bags. You're at the store and get your apples, your fruit, or your veggies and put them in these bags instead of those plastic ones. They have all different sizes that you can use. You need to put bigger items like broccoli, cauliflower. Next, to help eliminate microplastics, you can use reusable Ziploc bags. They come in all different sizes and they're really easy to use and wash afterwards. Paper towels. These are actually reusable. You tear them off just like you would a normal paper towel. Use it to wash. When you're done, rinse it in water and soap and then let it dry. And when it's dry, fold it back up and it's ready for its next use. You can also use reusable utensils. These are bamboo and come in a nice pack, just like this. Reusable straws, multiples in one bag so you can share with your family or your friends. And you can use a reusable water bottle to cut back on all those plastic bottles. And then in your laundry room, you can use these. In your washer, when you wash clothes, tiny particles come off and get into the water. Coral ball traps the microfibers inside and keeps it from going out into the water and then eventually getting into our environment. And in your dryer, instead of using dryer sheets, you can use a cute dryer ball. It makes laundry a little bit more fun. Instead of using face soap in a bottle because it has lots of plastic, I use a bar face soap. It's super easy and it makes me feel good about helping the environment. I hope these tips were helpful and it gave you some good ideas on how you can start to reduce microplastics in your own home. We hope you had lots of fun with us today. We explored our backyard using mini microscopes. And learned more about the microscopic ecosystems around the bay. We also made bags out of old t-shirts. And learned a little bit more about how we can help the environment at home. Thanks for watching At Home with the Bay. See you next time.